These two lenses blew my mind as a landscape photographer for telephoto use. But which one is better for landscape photography? Let's find out in this video. What's up y'all, it's a Project Photography, back with another video and today, people, today. Before we get started, make sure to follow all my socials down in the description bar below. But on my left here is the Nikon Z 135mm f1.8 S Plena. And on my right, we have the 24 to 200 millimeter f4 to 6.3 VR. Now, both of these are incredible lenses for my telephoto use cases for landscape photography. They'll isolate certain parts of the landscape and really highlight those different subject matters. And today, I wanna to do an in-depth comparison between both these lenses to figure out which is the best telephoto lens for landscape photography. So in this video, we're gonna be running through a few different aspects about these two lenses that make them so different relative to each other. But the first one I really wanna start off with is ergonomics. And as you can tell, these two lenses are very different when it comes to the shape and build. First of all, the 24 to 200 is not only a lot shorter, but it's also not as wide as the 135 millimeter. And this is really beneficial for landscape photography. We're able to fit just much more camera gear into our camera bag because our lenses are smaller and the 24 to 200 definitely has that advantage over the Plena. But in addition to the 24 to 200 being smaller than the Plena, it is also more lightweight. We have the 24 to 200 coming in at 565 grams versus the Plena coming in at 995 grams. Now, this is quite a big difference to be quite honest with you. I mean, that's about half the weight that the 24 to 200 is relative to the Plena. And this can make a very big difference in terms of hiking or even packing. We want lighter, smaller gear, and the 24 to 200 definitely accomplishes that over the Plena. And because the 24 to 200 is not only smaller, more compact, and more lightweight, this allows it to balance much better on a tripod. And this is just so much more useful when shooting for panoramas or even grabbing the right composition. You just feel like you don't have to fiddle with it as much. And it's a much more balanced setup. But this doesn't mean that the Plena is a bad lens to use on a tripod. I mean, honestly, with this plus a Nikon Z6, able to balance it just fine on a tripod. Yes, it is a little bit heavier, but I don't feel like it's too lens heavy to make the tripod way harder to use. Now, one aspect where I felt the Plena definitely beats out the 24 to 200 is in build quality. We are gonna get a much better built lens with the Plena, mainly because it's made out of more metal relative to the 24 to 200. And I just feel like it's gonna survive the elements a lot better. On top of it, it just feels a lot more robust. And to me, build quality is an absolutely essential part for landscape photographers, especially because you're gonna be in the elements, shooting uh, subject matters that aren't necessarily the cleanest all the time. So build quality, I definitely have to give it to the Plena. Another aspect that I really love about the Plena is the fact that we have an AF-NF switch. Now this is incredibly important, especially when you're shooting landscape photography. We wanna be able to toggle between autofocus and manual focus really quickly. The Plena definitely accomplishes that. Whereas the 24 to 200 does not have an AF-MF switch. On top of it, we do get a much nicer manual focus ring on the Plena. Now this is gonna allow us to get a much cleaner, much easier focus when we're shooting landscape photography and we are always manual focusing, especially with a telephoto lens. And we do have a manual focus ring here with a 24 to 200, but it's not nearly as big. So I think when it comes to ergonomics controls, I do like the Plena a little more over the 24 to 200. But obviously if you're looking for the most lightweight, the most compact lens, 24 to 200 will definitely be the lens for that. The last aspect I think that the Plena wins in over the 24 to 200 in ergonomics is the fact that we have 82 millimeter filter thread for the Plena. This makes it a lot easier to use ND filters. We don't need a step up ring, unlike the 24 to 200, which has a 67 millimeter filter thread. And you should be getting most of your filters in 82 millimeters anyways. So there's just that one barrier to entry that makes it a lot easier to use a Plena over the 24 to 200. Now we need to move into the focal length and to me, this is one of the most important differences between the Plena and the 24 to 200. Obviously with the 24 to 200, we do get a nice zoom range from 24 all the way to 200. And having that 24 to 200 range just makes this lens so much more versatile over the 135. You're able to just grab essentially any composition you want and you don't have to worry about the focal length being an issue. Because if you have that shorter composition, you can go ahead and grab it. But if you have the longer one, you can also grab that as well. There's just so much more room for error. But when it comes to the 135, you have to be far more meticulous with this lens. You can't just go up there and say, okay, I'm gonna grab whatever composition I want. 
With the 135, you simply have to capture what you are given. Now, this isn't a bad thing. Prime lenses force you to think differently about your photography and definitely makes you, you know, consider the composition that you're trying to grab versus just getting the perfect composition all the time. It will absolutely challenge you as a landscape photographer and honestly might improve your skills as a result. But when it comes to the 135, I really like it. It feels like a medium to the photo type of focal length. And I actually found myself being able to capture pretty much any composition that I wanted with this lens. Now it's not gonna be so tight that you're really isolating one particular subject matter. You really are able to build compositions around your main subject matter because it's not such a tight focal length. And the last aspect that's so incredibly important with the Plena is the fact that it has a 1.8 aperture. And this paired with a 135 focal length makes it such a lethal lens especially for isolating your subject matters. A lot of the times I'd find myself choosing a subject matter out in the distance and using the 1.8 aperture to blow out the foreground. Now this is not something that we're gonna be doing with a 24 to 200. We can capture those unique different perspectives that simply is not available to us in any other lens. And this is so interesting because with landscape photography, we are majority of the time shooting at F8. So we can make sure we get the corners nice and sharp. But because we have a 1.8 aperture here, really able to get that nice shallow at the field. And it actually performs incredibly well at 1.8. We're still able to get that nice corner corner sharpness. So when it comes to these different lenses, you are definitely using them for a lot of different reasons. Obviously the 24-200, which allow you to grab all the compositions you want. And in landscape photography, compositions are everything. With that being said, let's take a quick break and talk about our friends over at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is our partner for today's episode and has been a phone service of choice for the past five months. They offer premium wireless for as little as $15 a month and doesn't cut corners on speed coverage and data. So if you're interested, feel free to scan the QR code on screen or check the link in my description. And switching to Mint was super easy as I was able to do it from the comfort of my own home using their eSIM cards. And even when shooting landscape photography, Mint service has allowed me to reliably stream music, access my GPS, or watch videos on the go. It's a huge reason I've enjoyed Mint and will continue to use them. And from now until the end of March, they have a special limited time offer going on, which allows you to get any of their three month plans for just $15 a month month and that even includes your unlimited plan which ends up being 50% off. So if you want to take advantage of this amazing offer make sure to scan the QR code on screen or to the link in my description. Thank you again to Mint for partnering with us in today's episode. Now let's get back and talk about the 24-200 versus the Plena when it comes to image quality. So as we move into image quality, I think one thing to say is that both these lenses are incredibly good. I mean, if we take a look at the 24 to 200, we are getting very sharp images in the corner, but I think this lens definitely performs best at F8. Another thing is that it's actually very consistent in terms of its image quality performance throughout the range of 24 to 200, which is fantastic for a super zoom like this. Sometimes we can see a departure in image quality throughout the focal length. I really don't see an issue here with the 24 to 200. And we get very nice colors and the vignetting does clean up, especially at F8, and this is important for panoramas. But if we are shooting panoramas, we are definitely shooting this at F8. Overall, when it comes to image quality, the 24 to 200 is just fine. It's not no S-line lens, but it is just fine. I mean, you're not gonna be complaining about image quality at all. But when it comes to the Plena, I think this is a massive, massive differentiator between these two lenses. The Plena is an S-line lens, and to me, is the best lens optically that Nikon has ever created. Not only are we getting the sharpest lens that I have ever seen personally, we are also getting incredible color rendition. That is just absolutely stunning and we get zero vignetting even at the corners at f1.8. Now, this is unbelievable, especially for a 135. I mean, we're able to shoot panoramas essentially wide open without any of those weird dark vertical diagonals showing up in our frame. Now, that is absolutely massive. That means that we don't have to be shooting at f8 and means we can use essentially whatever shutter speed we want. And that was a massive issue when using the 24 to 200, especially when the light has gone down and we do have to stick to f8. I did find myself shooting at shutter speeds that are a little bit difficult to handle and sometimes motion blur can occur. So being able to use this lens at whatever aperture you want is a massive advantage, especially for panoramas because we can get nice clean shutter speeds without having to worry about any motion blur taking up the frame. And overall, we do just find an optically superior lens with the Plena over the 24 to 200. So now we're moving into the last part of this video and let's talk about 
which lens is superior overall for landscape photography. These are both incredible lenses. You can't go wrong with either one, but if I had to pick one for the rest of my photography career, I'm definitely going with the 24 to 200. Overall, it is a superior lens for landscape photography in particular. The focal range, the lightweightness and all that is just such a major advantage over the Plena. But if you're thinking about, okay, I want to use a Plena for other stuff as well, like I think Portraits is a really good one. You can use it for events. You can substitute a 7200 for a lens like this because of the aperture, because of the focal length. I really think the Plena is going to have a lot more uses outside of landscape photography relative to something like a 24 to 200. So if that's something that you're looking at, I think the Plena is obviously an incredible choice to go with. Obviously, these are both incredible lenses. And when I'm packing for my landscape photography trips, I find myself using both quite often. Like in my Hawaii trip, I was using both all the time. I was switching out between the two pretty consistently. So it just depends on what situation you're in, but I have the luxury to have both. I know a lot of you guys don't and that's okay. So I think you should pick one that fits you the best. But uh, yeah, anyways guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. Let me know what lens you would prefer to have in your kit as a landscape photographer. And I do have my landscape photography print store up. And if you wanna check out one of the images I took with the 24 to 200, check out this image called Majesty from Afar, taken at Mount Rainier, showcasing this mountain peak in the background. One of my favorite uh, images overall. And I would love for you to go ahead and check it out. Thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.